What's up everybody? It's Realistic with Realistic Productions doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net and in this video we're going to continue on with our fundamental series. We're going to be doing piano. Now piano is one of those instruments that shows up in a lot of types of music. It shows up in EDM, pop, trap, country, R&B, hip-hop. It's a very very long list so it's really important and we're going to talk about the frequencies that we should boost and the frequencies that we should cut. All right, let's dive in. All right, so I got Pro Tools open up here. And as I always say, these tips and techniques will work in any DAW. And if you're capable of it, go ahead and open up your DAW of choice and do these along with me. You'll find that you learn a lot more if you do it along with me versus trying to remember it for later. So what we're going to be doing is the fundamental frequencies of a piano. And just like I said in the other tutorials for the fundamental frequencies, these are not absolute, so please don't think this is the only way to EQ piano and that you're going to run into this on every single piano. It can change from different piano sounds, different piano styles. It can change from song to song. So just please keep that in mind. But this is definitely something to help you get in a good direction, and then you can understand where those are. So let's go ahead and put some EQs on this. We'll start with this one. This one has a little bit more of a wide range of frequencies to choose from, and that's why I kind of want to start with that. And so what we'll start in right away is the bottom end of the piano. And these are just some loops that I just quick grabbed out of some loops kits that I had. Nothing too crazy that I put together uh, just to kind of show you that. But we'll start with the bottom end of the piano, and that's going to be between 80 and 120 hertz. So you hear when I boosted that area, it gets a, a little bit thicker. So know that that's where the bottom end of the piano is. Kind of underneath it, if you were to place a mic underneath the piano, that's kind of those frequencies that you would be picking up. So let me zero this out so you can really hear it. It would be a very rare situation where I would find myself boosting that area, especially in most cases when I'm dealing with piano. There's a lot already going on in the songs. I'm talking drums, vocals, synths, bass, guitars, just a bunch of stuff going on. So you really wouldn't need to. Maybe if you were doing a like vocal ballad and it was just vocals and piano, or maybe if you were doing some type of sonata and you had like, piano with some type of violinic doing an accompaniment to it then you might want to consider that but usually most of the time I'm finding myself getting rid of this because you can hear how it kind of resonates and builds up a little bit here so that's definitely an area usually worth cutting and then I also typically get rid of this low end down here it's usually not worth having that especially with so much other stuff going on it can really just create some more mud in the mix all right so if we move on i'm going to talk about the presence of the piano and that's usually going to be between 2.5 and 8k i know that seems like a pretty broad range there but you know pianos are different each one but i'll, I'll show you that and we'll just boost this so you can kind of hear where that presence of the piano is of what you're really going to hear what's really going to cut through a lot of speakers <laughs> Yeah, so if I just do a little scope through right there, you can kind of hear that. And then as far as the crispiness and hammer attack, that's going to be closer to the 10K range. However, on this particular piano, there's not really too much going on in the upper range with the, the higher keys. So I actually have to show you on a different piano sample of where that is. But, you know, typically I do more of a, a high shelf when I'm doing something like that just to kind of get it to sparkle a little bit. And that is where you'll get that crispiness and the attack of the hammer that's striking on the keyboard. 
All right, so another big problem area for pianos is going to be between this 500 and 800 range. You'll find that it, it makes it really boxy, and as, as soon as I, I boost this up, we'll be able to hear it. See how that gets a little more boxy, and if I zero it out... Now that can really take up quite a bit of frequency range in your music and in, in your mix. So I usually find that that's pretty good to cut out because that can really overcrowd your mix. So if I take this out. See how taking that frequency out can kind of make it seem a little bit more milky, a little bit more smooth. I like that a lot better for that. So now let me just pull up a different piano over here and show you where the crispiness and hammer attack is. This is one that I got from one of Oracle's uh, loop packs. I'm, I'm pretty sure this was from the Ben Trappin one. So let me, let me show you this. All right, so that... Like I said, that crispiness and hammer is going to be in this range right here. And usually, this is just a, a little tip that I do, is I love how the API 550A or 550B sounds on this. You could use either the Waves or the UAD one, or you could use the hardware output gear. And so whenever I'm in the studio and I'm recording piano, like a live grand piano, I right away, I'll grab a 550B, the actual 550B hardware, and I'll patch that right in because I, I just love how the 550A and 550B just have such a pristine top end. It's just, it's gorgeous. It doesn't have a, a lot of harshness to it. It doesn't distort very easy as far as some of that nasty clipping. And so if I'm using a plugin, I, I just naturally gravitate a little bit more towards the UAD version instead of the Waves one, but there's nothing wrong with going with that Waves 550B. But I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about here. Uh, it's just got a really gorgeous sounding top end. So if you're looking for a little bit more of that brightness, a little bit more sparkle and crispiness, that's definitely the area that you want to aim for more towards the 10K range. So hopefully this helped out a little bit. Hopefully you got a little bit out of it, and now you're kind of understanding some areas that you can consider for boosting and cutting pianos. So I'm hoping that you got a lot out of this tutorial today. Hopefully there was some information that was useful. If you're getting a lot out of this but you want to see more, please feel free to comment below. Let us know what kind of tutorials that you want to see in the future, and Oracle and I can definitely make that happen. We're always trying to find the content that you want to see. If you're liking what you're hearing from me, you can find me everywhere on social media at Realistic Productions. You can find me at the web, realisticproductions.net. You can find my man Sound Oracle everywhere at Sound Oracle. And if you're looking for the best 808s, the best kicks, the best snares with the craziest loops and samples you can find on the internet right now, go to soundoracle.net. All right, till next time. Thank you.